Hello, hello. Welcome back to Mishmas. It is, it's seltzer time. I am, again, getting a late start to this vlog. I did not sleep well last night. I woke up at about 2, 2.30 in the morning, just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, <laughs> ready to go. And I was like, no. So I um, came downstairs. I didn't want to bother my husband. I came downstairs and I just laid on the couch and I'm like, let me just, I'll just put on like a declutter uh, YouTube video. Those usually put me to sleep. I love watching, they're like mesmerizing and I usually kind of doze off. I sat through about two and a half hours of those because I finally fell back asleep at five in the morning and then I was just kind of screwed all day. I uh, was supposed to have Pilates at seven. I canceled with her and I just sort of like slept you know, in the morning a little bit, and then I woke up and then did some stuff around the house, and then I fell asleep again. Like, my whole day has been screwed up, and then my Pilates teacher was like, if you want to come in at noon, I have an opening now. So I was kind of like in and out of it, and at around 10.30, I was like, let me just get up, get my act together, and go to Pilates at 12. So I did that. So the day was not totally wasted. I did that and then I came home, you know, again, like I had some lunch. I was just trying to get myself together and I fell asleep again. <laughs> I fell asleep on the couch for like, I don't know, like another half hour. Anyway, woke up, showered and here I am. So it's just been such a weird day. I feel really out of it. I actually feel slightly dizzy. Uh, not, not like vertigo dizzy, but just like a little like lightheaded. So I definitely haven't drank enough water today. I should probably drink some just straight up water too. Hello, hello, back for day 11 for the advent calendar, starting with space and K. Here is box number 11. And what is the clue? What the SPF, we're nearly halfway there. <laughs> All right, so we've got, oops, the ultraviolet SPF 50 plus supreme screen hydrating facial sunscreen, very high protection. I've never heard of this brand. Huh, let's see. I believe all of the active ingredients, all the SPF in here is chemical sunscreen. I don't have my readers on, but I'm pretty sure it's all chemical sunscreen and that it is created in Australia. Wow, oh, I'm excited to try a, a new sunscreen. All right, day 11 for Jo Malone is down here. Yes. This big one over here. What have we got? We have, ah, oh, what do we have? The Peony in Blush Suede Body and Hand Lotion. Oh, lovely, this is perfect for travel. And then Diptyque. Let's see what we have for 11. Oh, I see it right up here. And we've got, ooh, another perfume. The Fleur de Peau. Ooh, oh, this one. Oh, interesting, it's actually not quite as like, um, like typically flowery as you would think. It's not a typical like floral fragrance. It's actually a lot more um, green in there. It's like more fresh. Ooh, that's really beautiful. And this is what we have for day 11, the ultraviolet SPF, the peony and blush suede body and hand cream, and the fleur de peau from Diptyque. Ooh, I'm really, I'm really loving this perfume. But what I did want to show you guys today is my, Butters. Okay, did you want to say hi? That's, that's all you have to say. Baby? Hi. No, your, your dinner's coming, but it's a little early for that, okay? It's a little early for dinner. What was I saying? Oh, so, the living room furniture. So it's finally finished. Let me just go ahead and show you, show you what's going on in the living room, and then I'll explain the situation and my thought behind it all. Uh, don't get your hopes up. It is, it's just three pieces of furniture and there's nothing, and you saw me put down the rug. There's nothing else in this room. So this is what I ended up getting. Uh, I'm giggling because it just looks so crazy plain in here right now. But I got this couch, this love seat, and this chaise lounge, which actually has storage underneath. I do need to bring like a steamer down here and kind of steam out, hi baby, and steam out the, um, the wrinkles in the cushion covers. So this is all from Ikea. And the rug, which, hey baby. And the rug, which uh, you saw me unroll, you saw Butters help me unroll, <laughs> unroll the rug. 
Um, that was from Amazon, and I'll link all of this stuff uh, down below. But the furniture is from Ikea. It's the Finala, F-I-N-N-A-L-A -N -N -A -A furniture. And I'm reminded why I don't really film in this room very much. It is still, despite putting this furniture down, it is still very echoey in here because it's a double height. Um, it's not only a double height room, but it's like a double height and then we have, here, let me show you. So this is what I'm facing, my front door and that is double height, and then we have um, the hallway upstairs. That's our guest bedroom down that way, and then two bedrooms and our laundry room is down that way, and then this is what's above me. So anyway, it's extra special echoey in here, so I apologize. Um, I'm gonna try and keep my voice down. Um, so I had not purchased or even thought about this room since we moved in because I just didn't know what to do, as I just showed you. it's the high ceilings, the double height windows. I just didn't know where to start. I didn't know if I should start with, you know, putting up some wallpaper, painting it. Um, I'm thinking about maybe putting up some, is it called Wayne's? I don't think it's wainscoting, but like framing on the walls, um, you know, that you can put like uh, wood framing, uh, molding um, on the walls and stuff. I wanted to maybe add some of that into this room, but because this room, is open and leads into the entryway, the stairwell, that uh, walkway upstairs. It's like I didn't know where it would end <laughs> and where like it would begin. So I don't know, it was just kind of overwhelming and so I just didn't really think about it. It's not a room that we necessarily needed um, in terms of like usage or whatever. We have our family room, our TV is in there. When we wanna relax, we go in there. Um, but this room has a fireplace, and so we really weren't utilizing the fireplace in the few months that you can use a fireplace in Vegas. Like right now, probably through the end of February, beginning of March, um, we can enjoy the fireplace. And so finally, I just thought, you know what? Let me find the cheapest furniture I can find um, and just get a configuration um, to play around with. And I, because I really just didn't know what I wanted. Did I want a sectional, which I'm not always the biggest fan of, but you know, did I want a sectional? Um, did I want this couch um, the way it is now? Did I want two couches facing one another uh, like we have in the family room? Did I want, you know, a couple of chairs? Did I want maybe a chaise lounge, but one of those like uh, sleeker ones that looks like an S or something? You know, I didn't, I didn't, I just really did not know what I wanted. So I was like, let me get some test furniture, essentially. So I got all these pieces from Ikea, I got it delivered, I had my handyman put it together, which was no small feat. Um, I think he started to put all the furniture pieces together and then realized you had to put some of the um, cover, the like not just the cushion covers, but the actual like covering over like the frame before you put it together. So anyway, um, it was quite an ordeal. I was so glad I hired someone. So anyway, that was my thought behind getting this furniture was that I just wanted to get some sort of configuration going and just see, do I like this? What don't I like about this? And live with it for a while because, you know, I just have a really hard time buying things, especially for the home when it's just like a blank space. You know, I, again, I like wasn't sure about the chaise lounge, if I wanted this style, if I wanted one that was sleeker, if I wanted a chair with an ottoman so that you know you could move maybe I wanted a swivel chair so I could you know angle it so that's why I got this furniture and this definitely is not the um, like final final product um, I would say for the living room I mean who knows I may end up living with this furniture for a little while and just absolutely loving it I, ha I have no idea but the impetus behind getting this furniture was just to kind of test it out and just to get something in this room so that we could use this room and maybe enjoy the fireplace, read by it, you know, whatever. So just some things to point out in case you were interested, let's say in this particular Ikea um, furniture model. So these are the cushions. It's really hard to get these like kind of smooth. So they will look a little bit lumpy, which is okay. They look a little bit lived in. The cushions down here, the ones that you sit on, these are actually fairly firm and when you put the cover over them, they will look very, very smooth. So you can see that on um, the actual sofa, how like those cushions in the back, they just look a little, they look a little pillowy. And then the cushions um, along the bottom that you sit on, those look a lot firmer. And yeah, they're very, very firm. Uh, same with the chaise lounge. 
that part is very firm and then the back is much softer and a little bit less um, structured looking. So all of these covers like along the arms, the framing of the couch, they like Velcro underneath. So um, my handyman was saying if they ever look like they're loose or getting loose, he's like, you just have to kind of like re-Velcro them in place. I was like, okay, <laughs> that sounds fine. Um, and then this cheese lounge is actually pretty cool because it has storage underneath. So you can lift this up. It actually has this like uh, spring mechanism in there and it opens up and you can store like blankets and pillows in there. Um, so that's pretty neat. I thought that was made pretty well. So that's it basically. Um, this room is not that functional until we get some tables in here because there's nowhere to put your drink or your book or anything like that. So. I think I just need to get some cheap little side tables, uh, maybe a cheap little like coffee table just to throw in here. Uh, maybe an ottoman or two. So if you are sitting on the love seat or the couch, you can put your feet up. Um, but yeah, just sort of like play around with this room and just sort of figure out like how we're gonna use it, um, what we're gonna use it for. Uh, and yeah, and kind of figure out like what configuration makes sense. I mean, we may end up with like two chaise lounges. We don't have company over that much. And if we do, we kind of go straight back into the family room, the kitchen area. Um, I mean, I think this would only be used if I had like a big party, you know, like overflow or people wanted to spread out or whatever. I, I don't actually foresee that happening here in Vegas. <laughs> if this was in New York, sure. But I just, I just don't know that many people here. So anyway, that is the story for the living room. Um, and again, I wish I could film in here a little bit more. The lighting is really nice. The fireplace makes for a great like backdrop or, um, you know, great. It adds actually some nice warm lighting, but the echoing is really, really vicious. And not that I thought this furniture would cut it down completely, but I did think that it was gonna help a lot. And that's not really the case. I would say it's helped a little. I would also like to get some, you know, pillows and throws in here just to kind of, I don't know spruce it up a little bit right now it really looks like a blank slate just you know the walls being like this off-white the furniture being this off-white the the rug that i got is basically an off-white beige color yeah so i need to kind of like break it up with some things i may bring my chanel pillow and blankets in here um i do use those in the family room but i have plenty of blankets and stuff so if any of you have ever been in this position where you've just you know you've had this room that you just kind of don't know what to do with, like how did you handle it? I really wasn't sure about this approach. You know, I, I really wasn't sure about like spending money on furniture just to see, just to eventually sell off or donate or whatever in the future. I thought, oh, it's such a waste. I really don't like stopgap solutions to things, but I, I think if I didn't do this, this room probably would have, well, it would still be empty. Um, but it would probably remain empty for uh, forever. You know, I probably just would keep thinking about it, would walk by and keep thinking like, oh, maybe we should get that. You know, I would just be stuck in this like loop of trying to figure out what to get. But now at least I could look in here and say, I think that chaise is like a little bit large, which is uh, what I'm thinking. It's just, it's like a little bit bulky for this room. And what's interesting too, is that this room, unlike my dining room, unlike my family room, unlike my bedroom upstairs, um, this room is actually a little bit smaller than I thought it was. So I think if I like properly measured it out and properly like taped out where the furniture would be, I probably would not have gotten the couch and this love seat. I probably would have gotten like maybe two love seats. I probably would not have gotten that chaise lounge. I probably would have gotten like two chairs or something. Um, because I think the furniture in here, it just looks a little bulky. So that's, you know, the first lesson I've learned. I think I want furniture that's a little bit sleeker, uh, sleeker looking, uh, maybe with more framing to it versus like just this kind of heavy upholstered arms and cushions and stuff. So that's definitely like probably the first lesson I learned uh, with this furniture. So yeah, I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I took this approach. <laughs> but it seems, uh, it seems really extra. So anyway, if you guys have had to deal with this before, um, please, please tell me what you think. You know, even working with an interior designer, I worked with one just a little bit in the other rooms. Um, she kind of was like heading into retirement. So 
um, you know, I didn't want to bug her too much. So anyway, I need, if I want to work with an interior designer, I think I need to find someone else, which is, which is fine, but I need to find someone else. And even then it's like, you know, they talk through some of the options or, Butters, are you, oh my God, she's cleaning herself. I'm sorry. You know, they talk through all the options, but still it's very, very hard for me to visualize and imagine things, which is why I love California closets with that CAD <laughs> programming. Love that. So actually, I'm gonna take you upstairs and I'm gonna give you a bird's eye view of the room so you can see like how big this furniture looks in the space. All right, here is the bird's eye view. Hi, Butters. So I could move some of the furniture out like further away from the window um, because what I've done is I've just kind of lined up the edge of the chaise. Sorry, I'm leaning over. The edge of the chaise with basically where the room ends, like where the, the openings for the hallways are. And since there's no hard wall there, I really could move everything out. But right now the couch is pretty much centered with the fireplace. Um, that is pretty much against the wall. It's not totally against the window. Um, I may need to move that back just to give it a little bit more space in here. Um, and I can move that chaise lounge out a little bit, but like I said, I kind of just lined it up with uh, the openings to the two hallways there. So I was hoping that I wouldn't have to put this couch against the wall. I really wanted to kind of pull it out and maybe just have some space behind there, but it just, yeah, it just got too close. I like switched these two around, but then this looked really giant along that wall. So this furniture, I wouldn't say the size necessarily because I think this couch is, I'll list it down below, but it's either 96 or 108. Um, it's one of those uh, lengths, eight or nine feet wide. And I don't think it's necessarily the width, I just think it's the style because if it was, like I said, like a, like a couch with just like more framing and less upholstery, I don't think it would look quite as um, massive in there <laughs> as these two do. Or just have like one upholstered and then the rest could just be like thinner, more like delicate looking furniture. Like mix it up a little bit but i think three like big upholstered pieces like this is is just too much for this room so that's it that's the lowdown on the living room and the new living room furniture miss butter seems to really enjoy it are you just loving it baby are you just loving the love seat no no i don't like it mommy i don't like your dumb furniture i don't like your dumb furniture so heading back over to the kitchen i'm thirsty again i need my salsa I did get more of my Black Friday orders and I'm telling you, they're like trickling in at such a weird pace. So um, let me show you what else I got. And in fact, I got in an order that I was most, most excited for. Okay, well, I'm gonna start with this box because um, it came, I opened it. because I was like, what is this? It's so light. This is my Cure Weiss order. So they were having 25, I, I, I'm not gonna remember all this. It's, they had a sale, they had a Black Friday sale. And I decided to pick up the Beautiful Tint, which is one of my all-time favorite uh, foundations, in a shade that's a little bit lighter. So I have F4, which is just a little bit too deep and a little bit too warm for me. Um, so I got F2. Yes, I ordered F2. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. I definitely talk about this plenty. Sorry, that's Butters and her food bowl. Butters? I really have to get her like a bowl, a bowl holder. Hold on. Sorry, where was I? Okay, I got F2, so we'll have to put that on. And then you guys know how much I love the Cheek Collective, which is their palette of three uh, cream products. So I have Blossoming. So I ended up getting Happy, which has two blushes and one highlight. So it's this guy, which I've been using kind of nonstop. Um, it is meant for like a deeper skin tone. So I don't know if this highlight is gonna be a little bit too deep for me. Let's see. I don't think so. I think it's just sort of like um, a warm, like soft gold. It's not too yellow. There's like a little bit of peachiness in there. And then these two blushes, Happy, which is the one in the middle. And that's the name of this particular set. And, and the darkest blush is Effervescence. So that is this guy here. I don't even know why I don't have my readers with me all the time now. Um, so those are the two things I picked up from Kier Weiss during the sale. 
I'm very, very excited to have F2 because I haven't been wearing the beautiful tint too much because when I left before Morocco, I was like getting paler and paler and now I'm like losing any color that I got from Morocco. So I'm glad that I picked that up. Let me go grab the other boxes which are in the entryway, but I'm so excited for this one order that I placed. Okay, I don't think this is a Black Friday order. I don't know what this is. Oh, so. Uh, a friend of mine recommended these. So um, they have a puppy, uh, very active, and these treats calm them down. So, you know, Butters gets really, really overly excited when people come. So I wanted to get something that would calm her down, like I could give it to her maybe like an hour, half hour before people came over so that she just wasn't so, I mean, she's gonna be friendly, that's who she is, but I mean, she just, it's like, she like can't control herself almost. And she just like, yeah, she just works herself up into a frenzy. Um, so I wanted to try these out, but I just got these off of Amazon. I think it was like $30 and there are night. Why am I trying? Why am I trying to read without these now? There are 98 soft chews. And I think for a dog her size, she just needs one at most one a day. I may give her one now just to test it out because she's sitting there whining at me. I don't know if you guys can hear her. So these don't have CBD or anything in there. There's just like <sighs> herbs and berries. No, I'm kidding. Um, it has organic passion flower, tryptophan, valerian root, um, ginger root, theanine, chamomile, and melatonin. So calming agents, but no CBD. I feel like if this doesn't work, maybe I'll step it up to a CBD. Um, CBD treat for her, but we'll try this first. Maybe I won't give it to her. <laughs> she stopped. She's like gone over to the couch to lay down. Okay, I will, I will wait to give that to her on a more appropriate day. So that was not a Black Friday <laughs> purchase. That was just something from Amazon. Um, this, what is this? I don't know what this is. Let's open this up. Ah, from Saks. Oh, yes. So I had ordered that um, Kirkjian 724. Uh, perfume, um, I sprayed it and chested it out for you. I don't know which vlog, maybe it was the last vlog. And it was pretty much the same as Aqua Universalis. Not that I'm mad about that because I do love that, but I was hoping it was gonna be a little bit different. Um, but it is very, very similar. And I even looked up the notes and the notes are different, but they just smell, they smell kind of the same. Anyway, um, at the same time, I ordered the two Kirkjian holiday candles that I love. This is the one that smells like spiced apple and this is one that smells like spiced bread. <sighs> so good. This one is like one of my favorites. It literally smells like, like spiced, like you're baking spiced shortbread. It smells like kind of buttery. You smell like all the spices in there. It's so, so good. So I'm glad those finally arrived. This, uh, this package was definitely delayed. So I'm glad it's here. What is this? It's just my packing slip, so that was placed during the Saks like Black Friday. So I think I got 15% off. Yeah, I think it was 15% off beauty. Um, so that was a nice deal for that. And then I don't know what this is either. I think for security purposes, I think like a lot of retailers aren't putting their name as a return address. I've noticed that more and more. Oh my god okay this is not a black friday order this is from diptyque oh my god it's just so heavy they sent me the indoor outdoor bay candle bay is my absolute favorite and you guys know i already have the indoor outdoor candle i purchased it like a gazillion years ago it's pretty much done at this point but it sits behind me when i film when i do my like sit down videos and oh my god I think they sent me the, could it be? <gasps> they sent me the special edition one. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, look at this gorgeous, gorgeous baby. <gasps> With the gold, <sighs> the gold flex. Oh, this smells so good. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow, thank you, Diptyque. This is so beautiful. This is really incredible. Wow, thank you so, so much. That, I was not expecting that. I was wondering why that box was so heavy. I was like trying to figure out what I ordered. 
Ugh, incredible. I'll have to uh, figure out where I'm gonna put that. It needs a very, very special place. Okay, now this is the box. This is the order that I placed that I was so excited about. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Balak Tea. Um, I became familiar with them because I used to own a yarn store in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And around the corner, I can't even remember the name of the street anymore, but around the corner, there was this tea atelier. And it is one of the most gorgeous like boutiques I have ever, ever seen. My husband is a tea drinker. So I used to, you know, occasionally if I came across like an interesting tea, like in Morocco, I purchased him some uh, tea bags from um, the YSL Gardens. Uh, so I would like look for teas and buy them every once in a while for him. So I saw these Balak teas and I was like, wow, these are so gorgeous. And if you guys are familiar with Balak or have been to that uh, Brooklyn location, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is just such a stunning little boutique. Hi, baby. So they were having a Black Friday sale. It was 15% off. And actually I think they're having 15% off again. Um, Anyway, I'll link to it down below. They're known for their yellow tea caddies. And since then they've branched out, they have like just a chrome tea caddy. And I think now they have like a midnight blue tea caddy, but I really love the yellow. And so I got a bunch of herbal teas. I got, let's see if that's everything. <laughs> this is a very large box. So I got three different teas, all herbal. Um, I definitely, I just don't need any more caffeine in my life. I drink enough coffee. So I got Canyon Chai, and this is the yellow tea caddy, their original tea caddy. Isn't it beautiful? So it has this cap that comes off and then this lifts up and then there's loose tea inside. Mmm, this Canyon Chai smells incredible. I don't know if you can see it in there. Oh, it's so beautiful too. So that is one, and then I got, I got, Ashram Afternoon. Oh, this one has rose petals in it, which just makes for such a beautiful, ooh, beautiful tea. Wow, that smells great. I smell, I was gonna say I smell licorice. I guess it's fennel probably. Mm, or maybe it's a uh, licorice root in there. Ooh, very, very nice. Ooh, oh no, this one popped open. This one is called Nocturne. Ooh, this one was like filled to the brim, wow. <laughs> this one is their chamomile. I think they only have one or two chamomile teas and I really, really enjoy chamomile after like a long day. In fact, I'll probably have some tonight to ensure a good night's rest. Ooh, and I think there's some lavender in there as well. Mm, beautiful. I don't wanna waste any of this. And then the last thing I purchased from Balak is a teapot. I don't actually have a proper teapot. I have a tea kettle where I can boil some water. And then I have mugs that have like the strainers in there that you can put like loose tea into. Because my husband is a tea drinker, we often enjoy like a chamomile at night or whatever. And we're always making like our own separate mugs. So I thought, why don't I get a teapot and we can enjoy a pot together. They did a fantastic job uh, packing. That was very difficult to get off. <laughs> So this is the brand of the teapot. I don't know, I'm not well acquainted with, <laughs> with teapots, but I just really liked the looks of this one. It is my Salam teapot. So here's the teapot. Isn't that just such a handsome looking teapot? And this cover has like insulation on the inside. It's felted, so it keeps the teapot warm. And then inside there is a strainer for the tea. And that's it. Oh, it's beautiful. I think they have like a white porcelain version. This is obviously the black one, um, but it's white. And I feel like the cover maybe is chrome or something. But yeah, that one looked much more modern, but I kind of liked this one. This one looked a little bit more classic and traditional. So I think that is what was left of my Black Friday orders. The Kier Weiss, the rest of my Saks order, the Balak. Oh, and the Everlane. I think I had shown you like those t-shirts and that long uh, liner, like quilted jacket that I got. So I kept the jacket. I've been loving that. I've been wearing that um, to walk butters in the mornings. <laughs> right, cutie pie? 
Um, and the t-shirts I actually returned because they were too large. So I exchanged uh, the white one for a large because I originally ordered extra large. And then the black I couldn't exchange, they didn't have it in large. And then I just returned that like ice coffee, I think was the color. I th something like that. Anyway, I just didn't really like the color. It was a lot warmer than I thought. It was kind of like an ochre. Um, so I just returned that. So I'm just expecting a large white t-shirt to appear one day. And I think that's it. I placed that Spanx order that came. Yeah, I think that's it for Black Friday orders. So I think they've all arrived, finally. But I am curious to try this F2. So let's head on back to my uh, makeup room and try this on. Right, I actually took out F4 because I wanted to compare. But let me shake up. Let me shake up F2 first. Okay, so there's F4 and F2. Yeah, that's a considerable difference. All right, good. I wasn't sure if I had, you know, overcorrected or I didn't correct enough. Maybe I should have gotten the F1, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I think the F2 will work. I'm actually gonna use my Westman Atelier foundation brush. What is this called? It is called the Liquid Blender Brush. It is a really, really big, dense, brush and let's make sure i have f2 yes two pumps and going to dab so this westman atelier brush came out with the um the like the serum foundation of hers not the foundation stick but the one that comes in the little bottle and it's a little bit thinner the consistency than this uh this particular tint but i think this brush is fine for it and I think this shade is much better. I should probably blend it all in before I say that. <laughs> but yeah, I can tell it's much better than the F4. I think to use up the F4, I could probably mix it in and use it on my forehead since my forehead is so much tanner than the rest of my face. I could probably do that just so it doesn't go to waste. All right, so that was two pumps. I just have a little bit left over. I could probably just add some to my eye area and oh, I just love 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 this foundation this tint I feel like that brush is just a little bit too big to work product in around my nose so I'm just taking this uh, BK Beauty Angie Hot Flashy brush and kind of working it in around my nose and under my eyes and stuff yes oh I'm so happy I'm so happy that I got the F2 yeah, I think that's a much better match. Look how good that is. All right, well, if you use me as a shade reference, F2 is the one. Well, it's just about dinner time and I don't have any plans on going out. So <laughs> I think I will uh, just put on maybe some of this new Cheek Collective blush and highlight. Maybe I'll use this happy one in the middle. Yeah, and probably that's it. I feel like my eyes have been feeling a little bit raw lately. I don't know if it's because I've been playing around with so many different eyeshadows lately between like the Lisa Eldridge and the Westman Atelier pods and the Makeup by Mario eyeshadow palette. I've been playing around with a lot of different eyeshadows, so I think I'm going to give my eyes a break today, but I will put on just a little bit of blush. I think I'm just going to use the foundation brush and pick up some of this Happy. What a pretty, pretty bright blush. Oh, I love that, love that. And let's try this highlight and see if it's too deep for my skin tone. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 112 brush. This is one of the newer uh, brushes in the core extension set. They have another version of this Cheek Collective that I think will be, at least one of the shades I think will be too deep for me, but all three of these I think will work for my skin tone. I mean, this is obviously a very deep blush that I'm gonna have to be careful with, but these two are great. This one I think I actually like more than the one that is in Blossoming, which is this guy over here. I mean, this one is great too, but this one has just a little bit more warmth to it, which I like in my highlights. All right, well, does it look weird just to have blush and no eyeshadow? I can put on some lipstick. <laughs> uh, I've got my Rouge Coco Flash here in Boy. I really don't mind a bare eye look. I feel like it looks very, very like fresh. What's the matter, baby? I think Butters is just lonely. Hey, baby. You just lonely? <laughs> Are you gonna find a treasure in the makeup garbage can? Hmm? Hey, sweetheart. I'm just about done. 
So yeah, what was I rambling about? Oh, like having no eye makeup on. I think it looks like fresh. It looks really, really fresh. Mm, I'm so happy about the F2. Well, that is it for this Mishmas video. Definitely let me know like your thoughts on the living room and like different configurations and maybe like challenges that you've faced having to furnish a completely empty room. <laughs> I would love to hear any and all experiences you've had and if you can share any wisdom, I would really, really appreciate it. You guys always have the best um, bits of advice. So thank you for tuning in and I will see you in tomorrow's Mishmas. Bye.